Howdy doody, buckaroonies, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. It's been a minute since I've done a free plugin roundup, and today I wanted to change that and share with you five-ish more of my favorite free plugins that I think you should go check out right now. All of these are linked down in the description below, and they're all compatible with both Mac and PC, and some of them are even available for Linux. And of course, if you've got some free plugins you want to recommend to everyone, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and help everyone out. With that, let's dive right in. First up in my bag of tricks here is a plugin I can't actually show you because it has no interface, and that is the beauty of Air Windows. If you're not familiar with Chris and Air Windows, you absolutely should be. They are a ton of amazing open source free plugins that sound fantastic. I would argue some of these are better than many of the paid commercial plugins out there. This is NC17. So what is NC17? NC17 is designed to absolutely kill the dynamic range of your audio without turning it into a total distorted pile of mushy garbage. It's kind of like the most extreme form of a compressor. This plugin, like many Air Windows plugins, is nice and simple. It's got two controls, louder and an output compensation, so we can make it louder or not louder, and I think it doesn't get more simple than that. How this appears will be slightly different depending on the DAW you're using it in. Here in Bitwig, this is how it appears for me, so we can turn up the louder to make the signal louder. This is a relatively clear plugin. It does have a bit of saturation and color to it, but overall it's relatively open. And this is nice because it allows you to add some volume to things and it can be nice on the master bus as well if you wanna just add a bit more level to your track without totally killing it. But a little bit goes a long way. To demonstrate this, I've got a really basic drum and bass loop made up of three elements, some drums, a pad, and a bass. First, I'm gonna bring in NC17 on the drums. Let's solo those out. Cool. Let's try the pad now. And for something a bit more extreme, let's bring in two of these on the bass. Put it all together and we've got... blow your ears off loudness. Now, if that wasn't loud enough, let's put some on the master. Away we go here, let's bring this in on the master and absolutely kill this thing. And that is the magic of NC17 from Air Windows. It will absolutely blow the volume out of your speakers and melt your face with louderness. Next up, TDR Molotok here. This is one of TDR's free plugins. They have a couple that you should go check out. I really think Tokyo Dawn Labs makes some pretty good stuff, and this is a really awesome sounding compressor. So Molotok is a character compressor, and what I mean by that is it's a compressor that you use to compress stuff, but you're really mostly using it for the kind of color and saturation that it imparts on a signal, and this one has lots of cool character and color to add. This is really nice and easy to use. There's only a handful of controls. We have a sidechain high pass filter to avoid compressing stuff that's very bassy, threshold control, attack release, makeup and ratio. We've got a dry mix here so you can run this in parallel. We've got the output gain control and a knee controller. Here in the center, we have the alpha, beta and sigma sign. This is more or less a tone control because it changes the characteristics of the compression, but you don't really need to understand that too much. Basically just try and wiggle this around Around, it adds a little bit of a different flavor to things. To demo this here, I've got two different examples. First, I've got this kind of cool housey drum loop. Let's start bringing this in. Pretty gentle, not really even noticeable. Let's start slamming it a bit. crush it. Let's just absolutely smash it. And as you can hear, you can actually get some pretty cool 
character and color out of things if you really start to push the makeup gain. It's almost like the glue compressor in Ableton or Cytomics the glue. Now let's flip through the alpha, beta, and sigma signs here just to hear what that's gonna do to things. Start moving around. Getting a bit more transient there. Let's move all the way over. Let's smooth that out a bit. And work our way back. So a pretty cool compressor with a couple different flavors and herbs and spices to it. For a bit of a different example, I've got this fun, funky loop here. And we're gonna bring this in as just a gentle bus compressor like what you might use on the master bus. So before, and after. Try the tone. And kill it a bit more. Try it a bit in parallel. And that is Molotok from Tokyo Dawn Labs, a, another really, really nice compressor that you should definitely go check out. Speaking of compressors, this is DC1A3 from Klanghelm. This is another really nice color character compressor. This one's even more simple. We have an input, we have an output, we've got a couple switches on the bottom and a parallel mode so we can use this mix to blend it in for parallel compression. Very nice, straightforward compressor that also sounds very, very good. So DC-1A here is the little brother of the DC-8C compressor from Klanghelm, but it gives you the same overall engine just with less controls. This is super simple to use. We've got parallel compression with the mix. We've got the deep button, which activates a high pass filter if you're using it on some nice big bass heavy material. This way you're not getting too ridiculously pumpy and weird. We've got the relaxed mode here, which switches between RMS and peak compression for a little bit of a different flavor. If you're using Using this on the master bus, I would probably go into relaxed mode. It just sounds a bit more natural. Dual mono disables the stereo linking and negative mode here is just basically a way to totally kill your audio once again. And we'll try that out here on that same funky loop. So let's bring this in and see what we've got. So totally dry. Let's start bringing it in. High pass. Go into relaxed mode. A little smoother overall. Let's try dual mono. And now let's go into negative mode. So this gets pretty heavy without it and with it. So a super fun, super simple little compressor. I think this is great for drum breaks. It's good on vocals. It's great for bass or nice on your master bus just to add a little bit of glue, but a little bit of bite and sprinkle fairy dust on top. Next up, a super cool synth plugin that I think you should check out. This is Zebralette from Yuhi, and I've actually featured this before, but I wanted to share it again now that it's got a new interface and is much easier on the eyes. Zebralette is a single oscillator of the Yuhi Zebra synth, and this thing is an absolute monster in its own right. It's a very 
very powerful synthesizer once you start to understand how to use it and sounds pretty damn good doing it. So we've got four oscillator modes here. If we go into the center, we've got Geomorph, Spectromorph, Geoblend, and Spectroblend. And then we've got 16 of these frames per wave. And then we can scan through it with the wave here. So how does this work? In the geo modes, we can create a waveform by adding in points. I believe we get up to 16. So we can go in here and start tweaking things a little bit. Let's maybe uh, smooth these out a little bit. Let's go into a new one and let's tweak this a little bit and insert another point, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Now we can go back and scan through this. Let's turn off the delay here. And I think you get the idea. So we get that across 16 different frames. Now, on the other end, we have the spectral mode, which is up to 128 points to draw in your own waveform. So when we are in morph mode, it will interpolate between these frames and in blend mode, it will just simply crossfade between them. So it just gives you a little bit of a different tone overall. So kind of cool, fun stuff. Zebralet is a really fun and very powerful sound design tool. It's really awesome to create wavetables with if you're into that sort of thing. And it's got some really nice presets as well if you want to go through and get an idea of what it's capable of. For me personally, Zebralet is a really great synth for pads and atmospheres as well as interesting leads and basses. It really tends to skew more into super futuristic, hyper-modern sound. So it's very, very cool for that kind of stuff. One of these days, I think I'll have to check out the full version of Zebra here on the channel because it's essentially four of these oscillators put together and that just kind of makes my mind melt at the possibilities because Zebra LED has served me so well on its own over all these years. Now, of course, it's not a Venus Theory video without some reverb, is it? So here we've got Tal Reverb 2. This is a really, really cool free reverb. Tal has some other free plugins as well that you should go check out. There are a couple reverbs, couple delays and a couple other things, but this in particular, I think is one of their standouts. So Tal Reverb 2 is a great spacey, washy reverb that's a bit more skewed to ambient and just ultra washy sounds than it is being kind of a mix utility reverb. Although you can use it for, you know, a vocal send or a snare or whatever, it really starts to shine when you just crank it up to ridiculous lengths and let the glorious washy modulated goodness take over. So Tal Reverb 2 is super straightforward. We've got a couple filters here, a high shelf, low shelf, and a mid-band control, so we can dial in the kind of color and flavor of the reverb, the room size, which just indicates how big the reverb is, a pre-delay setting, and a stereo width control, as well as a stereo input toggle. Then we've got dry and wet, and I find myself mostly just turning the dry all the way down, cranking up the wet, and letting the reverb take the uh, center stage. To demonstrate this here, I've created a pad sound on my Waldorf Blofeld there behind me, and right now it sounds like this. So, not bad, but maybe not all that interesting. Now, let's bring in Tal Reverb 2 here, 100% wet, we've got the dry all the way down, and that turns that same sound into this. And I think that explains it more than I ever could in words. It's a really awesome reverb you should check out. It's great for pads, ambiences, things like that, putting vocal chops in it, and anything that just needs a big, spacey, washy vibe. Next up here, we have Akon Digital Multiply. This is a couple of things in one. This is a multi-voice chorus effect and has an amp modulation effect as well. So this is not super complicated, but it does have a good amount of controls, which is always nice. We've got the voice count, which is how many voices to the chorus we have. We can have up to six. Stereo spread amount, pre-delay. We've got the amplitude modulation effect control here with the rate and depth and frequency modulation with rate and depth. Now, I do wish the rate could be a bit slower, but it's a free plugin, so I really can't complain. Then up here, we've got a dry and effect level. And then in the center, we've got the EQ. Now, this will EQ the effect. So this is everything coming out of the effect. So it won't really be super apparent unless you're listening to it only with the effect up. But this is really nice, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. So let's uh, let's hear how this thing sounds, shall we? With that same pad from the Blofeld, this is completely dry once again. This is just running through Tal Reverb 2.
So a pretty cool, pretty lush sound. Now let's put that through Akon Digital's Multiply. Let's open that up a bit, just get a full range. And that is the magic of Multiply. It's a pretty cool, pretty nice sounding chorus unit, and I really like that you can dial in where the chorusing effect is taking place. To better demonstrate why the EQ feature is particularly useful, here I've got a drum loop. Now let's say we wanted to widen out the top end of our drum loop, so now we can bring in Multiply here, Let's turn this down so we've got just the effect level. And what we can do is dial in the high pass filter. So we've got full range, which we don't want because that's going to cause phasing issues on the low end. So we'll just dial this up. We can make it more or less steep with this handle. And I just really want this kind of on the top end wash there. So let's bring in the original and start fading in the effect from Multiply. Open it up a bit. So, before. And after. So a really nice and easy way just to add some stereo width to things. This is amazing on vocals, it's great for guitars, it's great for really a whole lot of things. It's just a very useful stereo widening slash modulation tool. One more example for all my guitar player friends out there. Here is a loop with drums, bass, and guitar. And I'm gonna bring on Multiply on only the guitar. So a really nice silky chorus effect, but it's great at adding a bit of width. So again, before, let's just solo out just the guitar and after. So, a great multi-voice chorus that you can go download right now for exactly zero dollars. Finally, to cap this video off, I wanted to share with you Audio Blast's Instalooper. Now, it might look a little weird, but it's a pretty useful and pretty cool sounding glitch effect thing. So, it's made up of four different rows here, and each of these can have a different loop length. We can right-click and add a different effect. So, we've got Bit Reducer, Auto Pan, High Pass, Phaser, and Time Expand. Then, we can do different loops and different effects per lane, I guess is what I would call these. We can reverse them and adjust the individual pitch of each lane or whatever you want to call it. Overall, it's not super flexible, but it is a useful tool just to add some glitchy, stuttery stuff, and it's pretty easy to automate in your DAW. Here, I've set up just a couple of lanes to automate the effect on or off for each of the lanes or loopers, I guess, if you want to call them that, and it's a pretty easy effect to start messing with things. To demonstrate this here, I've got a drum loop set up with some automation points, so let's take a listen before anything is going on. And let's bring in Instalooper. Let's try adjusting the size. reverse them, I guess. So a bit basic and a bit straightforward, but it is a pretty fun effect. And I think you can actually get some very interesting things going on if you start to play around with just locking the effect and messing with the pitch and stuff. To demonstrate just locking this in place, we can just right click and that'll hold the loop. So let's just play this. Guess right there is good. Let's shorten the loop. Start playing with pitch. Maybe go even shorter. 
Reverse it. Let's add an effect. Let's try a different loop point. Try a different loop point. Cool. And I think you get the idea. It's not the most flexible thing. I wish it had some more options and some more fine control, but it is a pretty useful and quick and dirty tool for creating glitchy loops and stutters or whatever. And if you're doing maybe a DJ thing live and want to create some basic stutter effects, this is a great way to do that no matter what doll you're using. There's nothing quite like the feeling of cracking open some fresh, fun new tools to make some music with. So a big thank you to the developers of all of these plugins for putting them out into the world for free for goons like me to play with. So big shout out to all the developers of the world. You're out there doing the Lord's work. If you know some cool free plugins that everyone should go check out, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And with that, I guess we're done here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.